What's up, guys? Josh Lau here with the Card Guys, and there was a very interesting battle harden that happened across the pond in Kiel, Germany, and there were some very, very unexpected builds in the top eight, and they were they broadcast all the games, and they were all warrior games. So I thought I'd check them out and see what's cooking across the pond, and yeah, we got. Dory versus Dromai, then we got Dory versus Dromai, and then we got Kasai versus Dromai. So let's jump into it with the quarterfinals. All right, getting into the quarterfinals of the Battle Hardened in Kiel, we got Dromai versus Dorinthia. So Dorinthia is the higher seed. And I think because of the dice that's on Dorinthia has opted to go first. Um, generally, in this matchup, I think that's correct. There's some absurd starts that Dromai can uh, can start the game with uh, if you let them go first. So, yeah, let's uh, let's see how this goes here. Um, okay, so this the the stream is just showing the uh, the four. Or the eight players in the quarter er, in the quarterfinals here. Okay, so we have Hatchets Dorinthia up against uh, presumably a more aggressive version of Dromai. Uh, we could tell that because I believe those are Snapdragon Scalers. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Uh, there's quite a bit of glare here. Over on the other side, we have Classic Hatchets. And the whole hatchet loadout here. Grains of Blood Spill really uh, has improved a lot of the uh, Dorinthia matchups. And Bracers is very, very important in this matchup because this allows you to kill four health dragons with your second axe attack. The, the uh, Valiant Dynamos here are also going to be blocking a lot of annoying breakpoints. And we'll probably be able to generate uh, probably 10 to 15 life uh, over the course of the game. All right, so let's see how this goes here. So traditionally for Dawnblade Door against Dromai, you need to be fairly aggressive and there's a, quite a bit of volatility in the middle of the game because uh, sometimes there's not any dragons for you to hit. And sometimes the Dromai player decides to race. So there's a lot of uh, different situations you can get into. Whereas I think with Hatchet Dorinthia, things should be a little bit more straightforward here. Lead with speed. An excellent card from the last set. Going to give plus three, generate an agility token. Very, very unlikely for any damage to uh, get through on this turn, but basically starting with the agility uh, for the next turn is, is really, really nice. So, yep, just coming in for five here. In terms of uh, for Dromai, you probably will block six here. If there's a attack reaction, they're typically Iron Song Response or Blade Flurry in the Hatchets lists. Uh... In the swing is also utilized. The attack reaction suite between Hatchets Dorinthia, Hatchets Bolton, Saber or Hatchets Kasai, and Hatchets Olympia are pretty much the same thing. Um, so seeing uh, Sand Cover plus Snatch being pitched for the uh, for the arm piece here. Seeing Blaze headlong as well, so Niles should know that this is a uh, red line Dromai, which I don't think that really changes much. But uh, I guess he needs to be a little bit more wary of a wide attack pattern that ends in snatch or commanding conquer. So. Whereas the uh, big dragon list is uh, very, very unlikely to hit you with Snatch at the end of a combat chain. Okay, a fine turn for our German Dorinthia player. 
All right, back over to Jean. And let's see how he's going to start the turn. I think that's a Sink Below and a Kyloria in hand. <clears throat> Generally, the red line Jeremiah's want to pop the gold a little bit more aggressively. So we'll see if uh, he uses the gold for Ash Generation here early. All right, quite a bit of glare there. I can't tell what that is. To okay, Tome of Imperial Flame. Drew a Snatch and another card and going to have to pitch away a couple cards. Good start. This will generate some ash. <clears throat> Looks like we got a Chromai on board or in hand as well. That's a very key dragon here. Sink Blow and Asvali being pitched here. So those are, so they're pitched for different reasons here. Sink below. Um, so this was a very large battle hearted, right? Over 150 players, I think. It was eight rounds of classic constructed. So it's possible that uh, the Dromai player doesn't know that uh, Dorinthia is on hatchets. Uh, kind of assuming that Dorinthia was on Dawnblade, so brought in the Sink below. Um, and Asvali is much better late game. Uh, Kind of as a win condition because you 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 see that the uh that Dorinthia has no AB. It is obviously not running things like rusted relics, so uh there's a certain point where uh death becomes almost inevitable for Dorinthia, uh facing down several burn the malls plus asvalize uh, at the end of the game. <clears throat> so we have a furnace activation here as well. To activate the gold, draw a card. And so we're really going to have to see how uh, Dromai wants to approach this. So Dorinthia can clear, theoretically, three dragons a turn. Um, in fact, it should be fairly easy to do that. Uh, so we have Chromai here meeting its immediate fate with Command and Conquer popping it. That's still going to generate an action point here, though. Snatch here, not looking very good against uh, Valiant Dynamo's dual-wielding Dorinthia here. And with the agility token, the as long as Dorinthia has a blue, we should have uh, a very, very easy... A blue and a source of go again uh, should be fairly easy to clear everything. Um, this also makes hit and run so agility has made hit and run really really good and this is something that dorithia is going to be able to take advantage of as long as there is a dragon on the board to start things off all right snatch being sent into the red zone no blocks into snapdragons into <laughs> hold the line which is active here a big blowout here. Well played there from Dorinthia. So, no card draw here. I'm wondering uh, why the early snaps here. I guess just trying to be card efficient here. All right, Kyloria joining the battle here. And currently there's no uh, gold or copper tokens to take. So, this is threatening to draw a card. However... Valiant Dynamos plus a card is a very very clean block, or we could have, or we could have the armor plus the floating prevention from hold the line. Going to end the turn with a scar for scar. Little bit of a stylistic choice to not arsenal the scar for scar, perhaps afraid of. Command and Conquer or Commanding Performance, although those are... Uh, you'd rather pop with the Command and Conquer, and Commanding Performance I don't think is that popular in Hatchet's list. Okay, so 
Axe coming in for two. Going to take out the Kyloria. Obviously a high priority dragon that needs to die. Okay, we got Dorinthia tapped here, which indicates that the hero ability was active. This is something that you do kind of need to track when you're playing hatchets because it determines which weapon you could swing on the third swing. Spools of War into another hatchet will generate a bunch of uh, gold tokens or uh, copper tokens. There's some threat of cash in, some threat of just having them to act as Kyloria food. But this is really just setting up uh, of the third swing. So we got no blocks here from Jeremai and two copper tokens on hit. And the hatchet of body will be able to come in again for three. I think we're going to have to pitch, though, uh, if they... Okay, looks like... Okay, so had the option to attack a third time, but deciding to arsenal, which indicates that that was a red card, maybe something like a Blade Runner, or maybe a hit and run in arsenal. Dynamo refresh and back to Dromai with a four-card hand. Okay, Rabble reveals the flame. No blocks from Dorinthia, taking four. We have Mira Guy and Tome. So Tome's going to draw the flame. And I think that was a rake the embers. So it has a phoenix flame, a rake, a mirror guy, and some other card that I can't quite see at the moment. Gonna pitch away a uh, uh, snatch. So snatch and uh, phoenix flame gonna be pitched. Um, very important to keep the phoenix flame in the deck for cards like flame call awakening. So generating some ash here. And I guess you have to deploy something here, right? You can't just... It's not the not the greatest draws here, but at least the mirror guy will be able to attack. Just notice these playmats. These playmats look real, real nice, especially when they're combined together. That's really, 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 really neat. All right. Rick Dambers going to deploy three baby ash wings and start the Kadachis. Dynamo is going to block one and likely taking the other two damage here. And going to Arsenal the Mirror Guy. So that's a card that you want to combine with Crowbuy or. It, it combines well with a lot of dragons. One thing that uh, 
Jeremiah is definitely going to want to do is keep an eye on. Okay, so there's the red Blade Runner as I predicted. So, so Dorinthia is going to want to be coming in, clearing some Ash Wings, but going to want to send the second attack at Dromai because it would be a giant waste of nine damage here if uh, you sent the Hatchet of Mind into an Ash Wing. <clears throat> so, like I said, uh, Dromai is definitely going to want to keep an eye on which poppers the Dorinthia has, as well as whether or not the Dorinthia is running Remembrance. Also cards like Down and Dirty, Fendel's Fighting Spirit. Uh, these are all cards that Jeremiah's going to have to keep an eye on. If it's just three Command and Conquers, then uh, going to have an easier time. Jeremiah has a Sigil in hand and some other cards. Can't quite see. But this is nine go again, a substantial chunk, 20% of Jeremiah's current health here. Looks like we have, we have a Flame Call Awakening, a Sigil, and several other cards. Dorinthia still sitting with, I think, two cards. Uh, Nourishing Emptiness going to block a little bit. Blade Flurry going to pump this to 11, giving plus two to the final attack. A very, very nice technique is that uh, Blade Flurry can apply to the first or second or the second and third attack. And even though it says Blade Flurry, it does apply to the hatchets. We have a Blade Runner being pitched here for the grains. And gonna follow up with a hatchet for five, targeting Dromai, I presume. Bigger tokens, extremely important in Hatchet Dorinthia. This enables you to go three wide with two cards that have go again that cost one also allows for plays with spill blood and also allows you to cycle vigor tokens from turn to turn not saying that uh, grains isn't good in domblade because it is but uh, it is also extremely strong in hatchets and Okay, looks like Dromai is going to take the five and it's going to be on Dromai to make something happen here with three cards in hand, two Ash Wings, and an Arsenal Mira guy. Dorinthia is off an Arsenal now. Okay, Chromai. Using up the last ash. Mm, that's why the last turn was a little bit difficult because if he went for Rick, he would go down to very, very low ash. All right, so Sigil being pitched for Flame Call Awakening, searching up Phoenix Flame and generating an ash, which will probably go into the Mirror Guy. All right, no box from Dorinthia on the Flame Call Awakening, taking three. Gonna activate the furnace to generate another ash, going up to two ash. Gonna spend one of those ashes on Mirror Guy. 
and in comes Chrome I. So we're going to see the whole board swing here, basically. Good chunk of damage here. So Dorinthy's going to have to think about how to clear two dragons and pressure face with four cards and a vigor token. All right, going with the ordering of Chromai Ash Ash Mirror Guy. <clears throat> so keeping four cards here indicates that Dorinthia can go three wide. Maybe even go three wide and arsenal a card, depending on the exact holdings. Okay, start of Dorinthia's turn, Vigor pops. And it's time to go clearing some dragons. I'm gonna start with killing the Chromai first, if I had to guess. May need to bracers into the mirror guy, depending on how things go. All right, Glint the Quicksilver going to be the go again source of choice, indicating that he has another blue. Is that the is that a ripple away? I couldn't quite see, but that's a that's an interesting tech choice. Okay, a very large hatchet going towards Dromai's face, which makes sense. And then the other hatchet will be able to clear Mirror Guy with the assistance of the bracers. So this is going to require the whole an, another card to be pitched, but. Uh... Definitely worth it to get that off the board. Over on the Dromai side, uh, I think we have a Mira guy, and let's see what else. I think that's the Ravenous Rabble alternate art. I'm not exactly sure. Blade Flurry. Okay, so Blade Flurry is going to help uh, clear the mirror guy here. Okay. Although, I think it's going to be very tempting to send a hatchet at Dromai because Dromai has already indicated that they don't really want to block. And target here. He pointed at Dromai, ooh. That is almost assuredly a mistake. So generally you you take care of these larger dragons unless you're sure the game is gonna end. Without a five card hand, even if you draw like evasion such as spill blood or iron song determination, I don't think you can uh I don't think that this is wise. I would have personally uh, killed the dragon. This also enables different uh, outs, such as drawing your other command and conquers. All right, back to Dromai. Remember, we have a Rabble plus a couple other cards. Okay, there's the Rabble. Going to flip a Sigil of Solace, the 
Spanish version. Coming in for four go again. And very aggressively taking four damage there. Burn them all being deployed. This is another reason to keep your life total a little bit higher. Play a little bit slower as Dorinthia. Mirgai into Kylor. Sorry, Mirgai being pitch four Kyloria. Ash neutral. One arcane flying over. Going to drop to 18. And... Now we have another situation where Dory's going to need to go three wide to make progress on Dromai's health total. That Vigor token should be gone, unless he remade one. I didn't catch if he remade a token. Grains plus... Dynamos plus a card. That will not take your Vigor token. That will draw a card, sir. <laughs> Just blocking three. Allowing a draw? Oh, sorry. He has copper tokens. I'm blind. My bad. <laughs> Jeremiah's like, what am I going to do with this? Well, you could pitch your whole hand to make four ash. <clears throat> okay, baby ash wing for one. And baby ash wing for one. Down to 15 here. After all is said and done. Or, okay. I might have missed the life total change there. So, Dorinthia's armor is a little bit busted up now. Still hasn't, like, arsenaled anything to get to take advantage of Crown of Providence. We've seen Dorinthia basically operate on four cards every single turn. This, this, this game, in terms of turn length, has not been very long. <laughs> Alright, so... Kills Kyloria, Glint. This is another reason why you want to kill the dragons in general. Is that if there's less dragons on the board, you can actually go face with hatchets and get reprised with Glint once in a while. Okay, yellow hit and run into hatchet is five. Now, where is this five going? I feel like the game has gone a little bit too quickly for Dorinthia. The dynamos have not gotten quite enough value, I think. And we haven't seen the clunkiness of Dromai adding all the D-Reacts, sand covers, and stuff like that uh, come into play yet. So if you notice that your opponent sideboarded incorrectly, you should be trying to extend the game and make them draw those awkward hands. Because the longer the game goes, the higher chance for Dromai's offense to stumble is. This will also allow uh, Dorinthi to get good use out of her grains, dynamos, even Crown of Providence. Like, all the equipment pieces want to be used for a longer game. Whereas, look at Dromai's equipment. The only long-term equipment she has is the Flamescale Furnace. Both, so again, choosing to ignore the mirror guy and sending a lot of damage at face. Two cards 
Blaze Headlong and Sigil. So going to be able to start the turn with an Ashwing and then Sigil to give a go again. And then play out the Blaze Headlong. Or you could just lead with Blaze Headlong and then play Sigil in response to it. Okay, so from Durinthia's perspective, it should be very, very obvious that this is a Sigil. Cashing in the crown here for a better card from hand. Yep, looks like Niles is happy with his arsenal. All right, so three life gained for Jomai and one damage taken brings it to an even game. And we have two one one and one arcane coming across. So if Dory wants to keep the whole hand, we'll drop to five. <clears throat> All right, Command and Conquer going to pop the second attack. Saving one health there. All right, Vigor pops one resource. Operating on a three card hand plus an arsenal. And once again, pointing at Jermai. So very unlikely this is Glint, because we've already seen two Glints. So I think Jeremiah will be perfectly happy to block from hand. This game's going to come down to the wire here. So both players need to start thinking like several turn cycles ahead. So for Jeremiah, the win con is... The Burn the Mall plus the Baby Ashwing. Dorinthia definitely going to need a, a smooth turn-to-turn -turn, uh, draw. Blade Flurry. <clears throat> and Blade Runner. Okay, so another good reason to go face here. but it won't be lethal damage. And that's kind of the issue. Bracers into swing again. So unfortunately that's a blue blade runner. So this is not a lot of damage. This could have been nine but it is not. I'm gonna block for six, take one. Dynamo reset and passing. So the Arsenal card has been there a good minute. That could be a spill blood. Rabble gonna reveal fate for scene. For Gogan. And we've kind of seen that uh, this mirror guy basically has gotten a ton of value. So, yeah, that's why we, we, we kill the named dragons in general. Especially, the, the heuristic is, is if the game is going to go longer than two to three turns. We kill it. And for Hatchet Dorinthia, with only a couple attack reacts, plus no snowball potential from Dawnblade, plus no very little evasion, uh, 
the draw my player can slow the game down tremendously if they want. Especially considering you saw that they have boarded in Sync and Fate. Which, as Dromai, to be honest, you basically have to because if it's Domblade Dory and you don't have your defensive cards, you are in a lot of trouble. Especially if you're Redline Dromai. Redline Dromai is, is probably much happier to see Hatchet Dorinthia than uh, Domblade Dorinthia. All right, careful consideration from Dorinthia. I think if you have spill blood, you could go for it, but... Okay, opting to just block with the shift. Mirror guy plus burn them all. Two plus one, arcane hits. And two physical damage. Gonna block with dynamos, take one. <clears throat> and ending the chain with snatch. It is good that the bracers have already blocked once. So that's something nice that he's done. Very, very clean block here. Okay, blocking with the spill blood. Hmm. Indicating maybe. Maybe he has one already, but. Um, yeah, a little bit of an awkward hand. Okay, so you know your opponent has a fate for scene. Now, if you don't attack Jeremiah, obviously they're going to get value by just arseling it. Uh, but kind of like just clearing the board. Lead with speed, okay. Lead with speed. So... This turn, he doesn't have an agility generation. And swinging it at Dromai, even if you have something like, well, like, there's there's no poss there's no situation where Dromai dies here because there's no floating. If you don't give her a prize. Um, it looks like Fate for Scene just going to, Reduce the amount of damage taken here. And no go against source. Ooh. We're, we're really seeing the how one decision can uh, impact the game. Nourishing being pitched. I wonder if the Arsenal card for... Our Dorinthia player is a D React, kind of anticipating the uh, other nourishing. Maybe I don't. I don't. Not exactly sure. Okay, Rake going to give a bunch of Ash Wings here. Graveyard check from our Dromai player. Not exactly sure what that's. Representing. Okay. Three more Ashwings join the battle. To be fair, this is a fairly slow second rake. Um, there's been many games where it's like turn three and I'm staring down four Ashwings already. And, oh man, we're almost in Kadachi lock here. So there's... There's still one card in hand, that's the issue. If, as soon as Dorinthia has to start giving cards to these Ash Wings, the game is over. In fact, the game might already be over, depending on uh, the hand texture. I'm really curious what that Arsenal card is for, for Dorinthia. For, for his sake, I really hope it's Spill Blood. I think last turn... Uh, he drew a hand that just wasn't able to go because it lacked the blue. Yeah, 
he's not he's not going to be able to keep his whole hand, unfortunately. Oh boy. Okay. Oh, it could be a hold the line in Arsenal, actually. That's that's actually possible. So I think, I mean, if you drop to one, you die to burn them all. If you don't drop to one, you have to give an extra card and you die indirectly. So not the best position here. We actually haven't seen a Command and Conquer either from the Dromai. That is uh, very terrifying on a large board here. Okay, so yeah, I think uh, now is just deciding whether to drop to one or not. And you could only do that if you have a lot of evasion. Dromai playing the Fate for Scene on the turn before might come back to bite him in the ass. Because you, you haven't seen your opponent play a Spill Blood. You're getting low. You're up against Hatchet Story. You Unless you desperately want to put something other than a D-React in Arsenal. Okay, drop into one. Still two more Ash Wings. Going to give the Grains... And then gonna have to give a card for this final Ash Wing. And this is what I mean by one damage can make a difference. All right. If this is any zero cost attack, this obviously gets played. But it probably is a dragon. So it's going to go to Arsenal. And I don't think Ardori has the closing power with only a three-card hand. I think a four-card hand might have been able to do it. If there's a spill blood in Arsenal or in hand. Also, there might be a D-React in the coming hand. Looks like there's not. Okay, no spill blood on this turn. Two with go again. Dromine knows just needs to survive the turn and send an Ashwing and the game will be over. So there might be some thoughts about over blocking this. At seven with three cards unknown, there's not a likely way to die if you don't give her a prize. So again, Blade Flurry, Iron Song response, and Uh, in the swing being the predominant attacks, reactions. Uh, blue overpower could also be could be here. So if Dromai decides to turn on Reprise, still there's no realistic world where they die. I think it's kind of safe just to block a little bit here and see if they play anything. Attack reaction check. I think we have two Blade Flurries been played. We haven't seen it in the swing yet, so that could be kind of what's... Uh, that, that could be what's an arsenal, because that card is kind of clunky. If you're not sending the second attack at face, it's not really being played. So traditionally, Dorinthia could add five damage very, very easily with three cards and two resources. However, Jermaine needs to recognize what he's playing up against. Reading all the cards, looking at the graveyard, saying, likely I have seen the card, the cards in your hand in the game so far.
And I think he's just, you know, dotting his I's, crossing his T's, because he knows all he has to do is point at his Ash Wing and he wins the game. So I think the safe play here is to block. The worst possible thing that could happen would be a singing steel blade, but Hatchet's Dorinthia, very unlikely to be playing singing steel blade. So it's good block two on two here. Hit and run. And denying Dorinthia's hero ability could be very relevant. However, I think there's an in the swing to push this. So I would actually like to see a full, like throw the whole hand down and just push the Ashwing forward. That's all you got to do. Unless Dorinthia is playing Sigil. <laughs> so yes, that will grant go again. However, Dorinthia's hero ability has not triggered. And that is seven block in hand with Furnace's eight. I think that's the play. Throw down the hand. You only get punished by Iron Song Response plus in the swing as the last two cards. And even then, the next attack only does three. So throw the whole hand down here and you win. Plus the armor. To be frank, even if he blocks for five, I don't think he's going to die. Block for seven. That is not the right number. In the swing, gonna push this over. Should have blocked with the armor. That would have saved you four damage here. Or three, the extra swing. So th this is a card he has not seen so far. This could be just, ba this is this is basically a knowledge check. Durante is saying, do you know that this card exists? And Fate for scene, traditional Chinese promo. And he can't push over and the game will be over. Unless Dory's running sigil. All right. Points at the burn them all. And... Dory, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what Dory's thinking here. Oh, <laughs> all right. I forgot that existed. <clears throat> I shouldn't have forgot that existed because that is a very good card. All right. Denying the damage. Still going to have to give a card here, but oh, we got a ray of hope here because this is no go again. Ooh, unfortunately, can't make any use of the dynamos. But Dory stays alive for another day. I think seven is just a little bit out of reach, unfortunately. If, if Dromai was like at four, maybe this would be more doable. But basically, uh, Dory's going to have to draw another take it on the chin next turn. Let's just put it that way. Also going to have to get all the cards from Dromai's hand. So that's something that's going to be very tempting. Is that Dromai is going to be very tempted to keep a card. Although there's not that many cards other than Sigil that are amazing. Especially considering uh, Dramai's out of Ash, so. All right, Dory with a 
three card hand. Gonna be able to attack. There's the spill blood. This turn would be much, much, much better on a five card hand. Because it's very unlikely this spill blood is gonna get six value. Very likely it's gonna get four. All right. In comes the other hatchet, five dominate. And that means Dromai is going to be able to keep two cards to give the board go again. One card in hand obviously has to block or you die to end the swing. Burn them all, blocking for three. Taking two. And for Dorinthia's sake, I hope that is another take it on the chin that you arsenaled. And even then, because the army of dragons is probably going to have go again, I don't think it matters. Tome, yep, that will probably be it. Pitching and then going to keep the, uh... oh, he even has a second burn them all. The fact that he blocked with the burn them all indicates like he knows Okay, he's reading the text on <laughs> Take It on the Chin. It's one source of damage. Which means you play the other Burn Them All and Dory Will Die Unless has exactly double Take It on the Chin. <clears throat> yep, another Burn Them All and overcomes Mirror Guy. We have a Take It on the Chin. <laughs> Unfortunately, no second copy. All right. Uh, overall, pretty well played. I, I think there was a, a slight mistake in terms of uh, attacking the dragons there, but uh, overall, I think both players played pretty well. Uh, in general, I think it would have been nice for Dorinthia to extend the game a little bit longer. Get a little bit more value out of your poppers, your dynamos, your grains, get be able to set yourself up for a strong um spill blood turn. I also think uh, now they're kind of pointing out I think balance of justice probably would have been stronger. Um cuz six card spill blood hands might be one of the ways to really push. Okay. Well, okay, I hope you guys enjoyed that game, let's jump to the next one. All right, <clears throat> we are back for the semifinals. This time we have one seed against five seed. We have Kevin as our one seed and Jean again. The Dromai that we saw just in the last game on Red Line Dromai up against another Hatchet Dory. This time with a slightly different loadout, running the Balance of Justice. Crown of Providence is worth two, Balance of Justice is worth five, so I agree. Very same, very similar setup. And Kevin, as the higher seed, has the choice of first or second. We'll be able to tell what he chose momentarily. All right, so for this game, because we literally just watched a Hatchet Dory against a Dromai, we're going to be looking for differences in playstyle, and we're going to be looking for differences in decision-making. And we're also going to try to see if there's, like, similar patterns from the first game. So the first pattern we have already can identify is that Hatchet Dory attacks on turn zero, also goes first if they have the option. One card in particular I'm going to be looking carefully at is how Kevin utilizes Glint. We saw in the previous game, Niles not uh, unable to get any Glint value. 
So let's see if we can uh, draw some cards with Glint. I think drawing a single card with Glint plus having Balance of Justice was actually the difference between that game and this game. What, what, what possibly could be. Sorry, what I mean is last game winning and losing. All right, Yellow Blade Runner. Going to quell one. With the mitts. All right, hit and run into a swing. I believe that's a yellow hit and run, so this should be for five. Definitely going to want Arsenal the last card. So it's unlike, so John should know that there's no third swing coming, even though this does have Gogan. In fact, I kind of just like uh, Grainzing and then Arsenal. Because your opponent only filtered one card. Now you're giving them the opportunity to filter multiple cards. Unless you're kind of going for a fatigue them out, try to, try to get dragons out of hand and into the graveyard type of style. I don't think this is... Uh... I personally would have just grained in Arsenal Pass. I don't see much use. I guess you you're you're not you're missing the Blade Runner buff if you. Yeah, I guess you get three cards here. This is for seven. And sand cover. Yep. Okay, at least negating the uh the ash, so that's not bad. Okay, gonna pitch it away. Okay. And I think that is a spill blood as well. Okay, so interesting choice here. So Kevin prioritizing having power cards and finishers in his deck instead of a arsenal card. Uh, Spill Blood is a card that is very uh, good late game, but obviously seeing it early doesn't do much when your opponent doesn't even want to block. However, um, I don't know if I personally would pitch it to the bottom because that's your one card six in Dory. So the faster you see all three of them, you know, the faster you get your power cards off. Coming in for three. And, I mean, you block with this card pretty much every day, right? I don't think there's a, any single card in Dromai that is valuable enough to just take three damage on turn zero. Obviously, it's not a sigil. Yep. Okay, blocking with Rake. I think Kevin's going to be very happy to see Rake gone. Although, I think Dromai is very capable of winning the game, even without three copies of Rake. Okay, back to Dromai. So, Dromai starting with Tempo, but two life down. This hand is awkward. This is... a. Uh, Looks like Double Dragon, Fate for Scene, Nourishing. Nourishing, not going to get much done. Going to need to pitch that for one of the dragons, I presume. Going to pitch two cards here. Gonna cash in that gold token. Okay, draws a card. All right, we have a plays hedgehog and We 
very, very awkward hand here because the sand cover ate the ash. So kind of starting from zero here. Okay, blaze headlong four with no go again because Jeremiah has not played a red card this turn. Easy two card block, overpower, blue plus dynamos. And I presume the Jeremiah is going to arsenal the fate for scene. Okay. Just going to furnace into send the Kyloria back into the deck. Mirror guys, CNC, dust up, and another card I didn't catch. Three card Dory. We've got a glint. And pushes it forward. At 38, there's no block here. Blade Flurry Glint. Seems good. Do you react from Arsenal to prevent some damage? Reasonable. Hatchet of Mind going to come in for five. Threatening Grains. So something similar I'm starting to see from both Dories is that they do not want to sit on an arsenal. Um, whether that's correct or not, uh, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure yet. But it does insulate you against cards like CNC. Okay, taking two damage and going to grains with the spare resource. Reset dynamos, pull the hatchets back. And pass it over. Oh, a Yenderai. Okay, we could we could see that later in the game. Endurance counters. Also, just it's just good late game when they have no poppers. So I do like seeing this uh, sent back into the deck. Early dynamo blocks from uh, both of our Dory players, which I think is generally correct. You may, if you really need to block other breakpoints, you have your other armor, like this, for example. Also, we we've seen zero defensive cards from e from either Dory player, uh, other than take it on the chin, of course, which I, in general I think is correct. You need your offense to flow correctly. You don't want to be including too many defensive cards. Okay, going to opt to not let that dust up hit. I'm going to trigger the guard well and the battle worn on the equipment. That dice is a little bit off the camera, but we, we do know that the balance of justice has blocked. 
Over back to Dory, four card hand, we have Heart of Fendel. Uh, Blade Runner. Yep, and Blade Flurry. And that's going to be a good chunk of damage. So this game is a little bit different than the first game because Dromai's had a very slow start. So Dory has been able to uh, keep her life total pretty high. And here we go. Hit and run threatening the third swing. Looks so like we have Sink Below, Tome, Flame Call Awakening, and some other card in the Drum Eyes hand. This is kind of a key decision. Do we start racing? Do we, you know, block a little bit more, try to set up something useful in Arsenal? Generally, you want to tome on a large hand. So that could be a potential card to set up. Do we want to sink one of these cards to the bottom, set it up in the pitch stack? Looks like that is going to be the play. Command and Conquer drawn. Of course, Command and Conquer not very useful when the uh, door is not arsling. So I think we're going to see Command and Conquer blocking this whole game. So a bunch of damage leaks through. Jermai drops to 31 and Hatchet a Body coming in again for three. Tough spot here for a Jermai player. Gonna take three and Dynamo reset and pass the turn. So one thing that I didn't mention between these two games is that because neither deck shuffles, uh, and this, this matchup has potential to be very long. Uh, the pitch stack and the pitching is going to be very important. This is something that we're going to need to keep an eye on. And I feel like I'm on mushrooms. The colors are switching <laughs> or shifting. <laughs> it's not just you at home. The colors are shifting. All right, CNC Scar for Scar being pitched for the Tome. And with the rake, this should be uh, this should be pretty good. Gonna choose to cash in the Balance of Justice, draw a card. So we got a five card Dory. And this is kind of like why I like setting up Spill Blood in Arsenal, because when they go for their Tome turn, you can draw an extra card, and then a six card Spill Blood turn can get kind of ridiculous. In fact, it, to, to be honest, it might actually be overkill, but <laughs> I do like it. All right, Rake resolves. Out come the baby Ashwings. And all of a sudden, four Ashwings have appeared this turn. And they enter the red zone. This Command and Conquer going to pop, deny a bunch of value here. Very nice. OK. 
Okay. So this is the first decision that we need to see from our Dory player. Do you clear baby dragons with your first attack? Do you clear baby dragons with your second attack? Do you clear baby dragons with your third attack? There's many uh, situations. I think in general, everything other than Spoils of War, you will send at the baby dragons. Red hit and run, going to be the go against source. And... Okay, just going to take out an Ashwing. Going to generate some vigor. I think this turn is just a cleanup turn here. And maybe Arsling a good card, depending on the situation. Maybe a double Vigor's turn. So it's it's not a, it's not it's not that bad to just take your turn to hit and run swing swing. I think they're confirming the ash total here. So Rick would give him one, assuming he pitched for it, and then take three. Looks like at the end, or in the end, uh, one of the Ashwings went away. Looks like we're still conferring with the judge about the ash wings and the ash total. Okay, so for the first time we have a decision in terms of face versus Ashwing. Maybe the heuristic is if it's two damage, you send it out as an Ashwing. If it's three damage, you send it at face. Ashwings are very, very dangerous to let live, though, because they generate value over a tremendous amount of turns. So in general, looks like Kevin's breakpoint is three, you send it at phase two, you send it at an Ashwing. For me, it's like closer to four or five, but yeah, I mainly play Dawnblade, so this is a... Uh... Maybe the heuristics are different for uh, hatchets. I think the last card is going to go to Arsenal. So I'll be curious to see what Kevin wants to set up with a large turn. Jeremiah thinking about blocks still. I hope they can sort the ash and the ash wings and all that out properly. It shouldn't be too hard because everything is on camera. All right, we have Chromai and 
Looks like looks like no blocks. Okay. Chromai and a couple other cards gonna be utilized on offense. Rebel, gonna find its buddy, four go again. And this is another critical point in terms of evaluating Kevin's playstyle. Does he block vanilla damage? The answer is generally no. Plays headlong, I anticipate. Ooh. Okay, so we got Command and Conquer and Spill Blood in the same hand. Kind of awkward. Probably going to have to uh, block with one of those. So we, we sent one Spill Blood to the bottom. We have another one in hand at the moment. And I think we're just taking... So if we, if we took that, we're taking the Ashwing damage. Or, okay, we could pop it to end the turn. Right? Forgot about the CNC. Even though I just talked about it. <laughs> uh, it's kind of late, guys. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Good usage of the hand. Going to be able to sigil, gain life, and arsenal the last card. So even though the turn was cut prematurely, uh, Jeremiah is still being very card efficient. Okay, four card hand for our Dorinthia. Three cards plus an arsenal. And I think it's going to be a spill blood turn. And I hope that there is a... Okay, looks like the spill blood is going to be moved into arsenal. And the arsenal is going to be played this turn. Arsenal could be a go again source. <clears throat> Blade Runner Blue, I believe. Gonna give this go again. So I personally would have uh, killed the Ashwing. Is that Cleave? It, I think that's Cleave, and based on the amount of time, yep, that is Cleave. Okay. Okay, so damage dealt can be dealt to an ally. So if he attacks the ally, that would cleave to another ally. If he attacks face and it hits, it'll cleave to an ally. So very likely that Kevin has an attack react in hand. You generally don't play cleave out and swing at face unless you have it, but... He also could be like, hey, I got nine damage. I, I, or is this eight, eight damage? Uh, I'd rather send that at you, which makes sense. So can't really get any reads here. So cards like Cleave going to be nice if you can pair it with a Glint as well. This is another reason why you want to keep a large hand. And a bunch of damage, and I think the Jeremiah likes his hand. But maybe he doesn't want to lose his Ashwing as well, so we'll see. Two cards plus armor. Could be okay. Looks like we have a rabble in hand. So, you know, obviously wants to attack with the ravenous rabble instead of blocking with it. Especially at such a high life total, there's no, there's no point. All right, Sink, Rake, and the Flamescale Furnace. 
blocking this for eight reactions. Oh, sorry, it should be, <laughs> yeah, they, they shortcut it there. It should be block reactions, no reactions, sick blow. Sync resolves, syncing a card. And that'll be the turn, arsenaling a mystery card. All right, I anticipate Rabble to start the turn. Yep. Rabble going to find a Mira guy. Okay, one of, okay, we have a Goblet in Kevin's hand. This is a card I really want to see him play out. This is one of the things that Niles did not do. He did not play any goblets last turn or last match. And uh, goblets are, are great because if you draw another source of go again, you could arsenal that. So I kind of want to see Kevin uh, cycling out his arsenal or using it plus deploying the goblet. Uh, that just gives you so much consistency. Uh, having go again is in a dual wielding build is probably the number one priority. Because if you're if you're not attacking twice and you're pitching cards to swing, like it's very inefficient. All right, no blocks on the rabble drops to 28. Over out comes Chromite. Definitely a high priority dragon to kill. Okay, spill blood. And blocks with dynamos. Okay. All right, three card hand. Oh, we have a glint and a goblet. Hmm. So we actually might see the goblet being pitched. Yep. And we're going to see glint and hit and run for the go again sources. So killing the chromai. Okay. Hit and run. And this can go at Dromai. And then the third swing can go at the Ashwing or go at Dramai. Again, I really do like clearing the board. Dramai is one of those heroes where it's extremely deceptive how much value Rake the Embers gets you. Um, I don't see this game ending anytime soon, so I... I would like to see Kevin uh, send his hatchet a body at the Ashwing just to keep the board clear. I think more value will be generated that way than just chunking Dromai for three. One thing I'm noticing is that uh, Hatchet's Dory definitely can m keep the board much more clear than Dawnblade Dory. Uh, Dawnblade Dory, obviously, to swing three times requires Twinning Blade, and that's quite difficult to get. And all the damage being sent towards Jeremiah's face. Jeremiah says no blocks. So down 10 life, but we got a five card hand. We have an E strike, we have a rabble, we have a mirror guy. E strike into mirror guy. 
Sorry, E strike pitched into a mirror guy. Looks like we've gone through about, you know, 40% of the deck at the moment. Over on Dory's side, I think that was a lead for speed or lead with speed. It's a pretty good card. All right, we're going to furnace into a big dragon, I believe. Or a costly dragon. There's Mr. Yenderai. Now, obviously, this is extremely oh, double Yenderai. Okay, this is this is very very risky if uh, there's a popper, but there's a mirror guy. So uh, this is a best case scenario here. Yenderai is you know fairly difficult to deal with. They're gonna take up a you know they 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 gain a lot of health. And gain a good amount of value. And I think we've only seen one CNC from Kevin, so there should be two more floating around. These guys really love to uh, check their graveyards. <laughs> um, okay, so if you're blocking this, looks like, okay. So if you have a popper, I think you pop this. And it's a runner runner. Brand new card from Heavy Hitters. And that's an efficient clear of one of the dragons. We still need to see a pretty hoping to see an efficient clear here from Kevin of the other dragons. Okay, so this so this could take care of uh a dragon plus, you know, going to face here, most likely. I guess you could also go for the Yendrai, but I don't think that's worth it. Unless you have a hit and run. If you had a hit and run would be excellent here. Did, did he start the turn with a Vigor? Because if he has a hit and run, this is huge. Looks like uh, looks like Kevin not being too confident here. Kind of decided, kind of like, where am I sending this at? Uh, looks like is face the place. Looks like it is. All right, face is the place. Got Chromai, Flame Call, Awakening, and two other cards. Can't quite tell what they are. Okay, more Kyloria food generated, passing back to Jan. Four card hand with two dragons on board. Medium threat level here. Dust up, I'm going to start the turn. It's gonna be snapped. Still three cards in the back. So Kevin's in a pretty good spot overall, I'd say. He's done a pretty good job clearing dragons. He's opened up a life lead. Still has a good amount of equipment. Hasn't played the game too fast or too slow. And he's been pitch stacking, you know, threats back into his deck. So I like his position overall.
Flame Call Awakening. Gonna go grab a Phoenix Flame. Of note, the Adds is going back into the deck. Something Kevin's gonna have to be very, very wary of, of course, is the Burn the Malls plus the uh, As Lies. None of, the, none of the dragons have attacked yet, and this is why. Waiting for the Chromite to join the flock. Chromite gonna generate an action point and gonna make, I think that's another popper at hand. So this first bit of damage will get in. With these dragons on board, it's going to be Chromai into Ashwing, Ashwing, Yenderai. Kevin not acting too quickly, not to give any information away. And looks like he's going to take the Chromai damage, take three, drop to 18. Life lead has, uh, you know, the life gap, I should say, has closed quite a bit. Taking two Ash Wings and sends Yenderai into the red zone. And just the Dynamo's blocking is a good sign for Jean. <laughs> Going to pitch the Phoenix Flame into the furnace and pass back. I anticipate this is a spell one turn. Uh, there's five cards. I don't know why, uh, or <clears throat> I don't know why it wouldn't be. There we go. Spill blood. So Kevin's other spill blood, I think, is still about five or six turns away, unfortunately. So this might get. Drum I low, but I don't think he's going to have another source of dominate for quite a while. Okay, E strike and a block. And shift plus blade flurry. Buddy, buddy cards from heavy hitters. Going to generate an agility token because this hatchet of body is going to hit. Now we really want to see another source of go again. So, unfortunately, I don't think he's going to be able to attack three times, unfortunately. But this is still pretty good. Going to be able to drop Dromai into the single digits. And this is this is the decision of the game, now that I think about it a little bit more. This push from Kevin towards Jeremiah's face, ignoring the dragons on the board, is very, very large, huge. And we know the position of the last spill blood. There was no deck shuffling. I don't think he's going to see his evasion for a long time. So I think this was very risky to do this. This, uh, I anticipate how this will play out is that Dromai will get low and this next cycle from Dromai is going to put Kevin also low and then there's going to be a standoff where they're trading cards and Dromai keeping one card or so for go again and swinging in with 
the smaller dragons. Going to block for just two. And Kevin's like, sure, take five, go to seven. Dynamo reset, arsenal pass. So Spill Blood really needs, really needs a vigor or an agility or there, there needs to be a little bit of help in, to ensure that you can hit three times. Very, very important to hit three times. All right, burn them all. Chromai plus a arcane damage. And this is one of the issues with dual wielding decks is that their closers are limited. It is basically, so like it, Olympia was actually pretty good at closing because you actually had double down as well. Yep. And up the ante, which was an extra attack reaction, extra dominate. Whereas Dorinthia is basically relying on spill blood plus the bare bones reactions emboldened blade an interesting choice i think emboldened blade is mainly just for dawn blade i think there's better utility blues uh, and hatchets so a ton of blocking here into a snatch very annoying and i think he's gonna have to let this hit because you go down to two cards, you're not doing anything on your turn. Sorry, card plus arsenal. Oh, we have a take it on the chin, actually. That's actually really good. Take it on the chin plus grains. Best case scenario here. <laughs> oh, he has an agility already. Never mind. That's, that's actually not best case scenario. <laughs> that's a little bit of a waste. And now, okay, facing four dragons at the moment. And Yenderai has endured a lot of turns. <laughs> All right, so I anticipate the Chromai dying first. And is this a hit and run? Okay, a lead with speed to set up for the next turn. So this is going to have to go. Ooh, going for face. Could have went for Yenderai. Going for face here feels like desperation. Trying to. So basically, it's. If. If Drow My Pilots perfectly from here, I, I think. I should win this. This is basically Kevin saying, hey, you want to get greedy? I'll give you the opportunity to gr get greedy. Do you want to be greedy? Do you want to make a mistake? I'm going to give you the opportunity to make a mistake. But I think with perfect play, this should not uh, matter. All right, Judge saying, hey, where's all your ash under your dragons? <laughs> He's like, right here. Of course, relevant for certain matchups, certain matchups not relevant. All right, with Fate for Scene and E Strike, Blades Headlong, and I think that's a Mirror Guy. I think this should just be a block with a card. And just kind of play out the rust. E strike go again would be a decent starting, decent way to start the turn. I kind of like blocking with the mirror guy here and E strike. Go again and then send the board and arsenal the fate for scene that kind of protects you against all the uh, warrior tricks later that could be coming. Kevin's checking his graveyard. I think this is very, very important. He's got to figure out how many attack reacts he has left. 
Um, but realistically, attack reacts are not going to do it. It's going to have to be dominate. Which is why, you know, I, I've always been like kind of thinking like, is spill blood by itself enough dominate? Yes, Iron Song Determination doesn't get that much value, but it does give you an extra source of uh, Dominate, which is nice for closing. Also, a lot of decks aren't running Route, so they don't have quite as much uh, reach. So that's something that I think uh, is pretty important. Route can surprise people for six out of nowhere. So that's uh, two cards that I... That I have personally liked in uh, dual wield Dory builds. All right, are we going to start with Mirror Guy or are we going to start with the E Strike? I think we might just play the. Uh, okay, E Strike, go again. Into Blaze Headlong, into Damage, 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 Damage. And now that Kevin's off an arsenal and there's three dragons on board. Hmm. Hmm. So he's basically going to need to keep... Oh, he's going to block with a spoils war. Okay. I think that's okay, blocking with the spoils, because you're more likely to face attack actions than a zero-cost dragon in this situation. And... This is an uncomfortable position for any Dory player. I I really think that Kevin needed to clear the Yender Eye. It, it has just been around for too long. Um, yes, it's extremely annoying to, to clear, but... Uh... I'm also curious to see how many uh, attack actions he's running because we did see the runner runner and we saw the command and conquer. And that could be a difference between uh, Niles and Kevin's deck. Walking with an in the swing. Ugh. The issue is that the burn them all is going to kill him. This, this, this Kevin's not dead, but he is basically dead because by the time he gets back to his evasion card, which is spill blood, he's going to be too low to keep a full hand. And one of the things is that we're when you play Hatchet's Door, you're all in on your hero ability. You lose access to Singing Steel Blade. You lose access to Steel Blade Supremacy. You lose access to Glistening Steel Blade. You trade all of that for the ability to hit three times with dual wielding weapons, which means you need to be hitting three times as much as possible. Also, you need to Take advantage of those big turns with Spill Blood. Getting six value out of that card is really, really important. Is this going at face? It is. Okay, probably the correct decision. You need... Jeremiah to respect you somewhat. If Jeremiah doesn't have a D-React, this is uncomfortable. 
because you die to iron song response you die to in the swing so it could be one card plus furnace or it could be an overblock Kevin has not seen a popper for quite a few turns. I think he's likely to see one soon. So that might be what's going through Jean's head here. Thinking, can I really drop to one if I block with a card plus armor? Wow. Opening himself up to dying to a plus three attack react. If Kevin's thinking on this, this might be Blade Flurry. Okay, hey, looks like he's like, okay, fine. Pass. That was, oh, he had sand cover. Okay, he, he didn't take that much of a risk. Okay. I was like, that is super risky. Looks like he's just going to set sand cover into arsenal. So I think you pitch the Asvali to play the Flame Call Awakening. Make sure you have enough ash to do things. And send the board. You you got to have an, okay. Looks like we're just casting Mirror Guy. Pitching the sand cover, going with the flame call awakening, and gambling that there is no popper. Because if there is a popper, this turn is realistically only going to get one card out of uh, Kevin's hand. Oh boy. So Flame Call Awakening, first thing that needs to be blocked here. And then we have Asvali coming in after that. Okay. Take it on the chin. Yep. Okay, going to generate an agility blocking two. Okay, so no damage from the Flame Call Awakening. Asvali should be pushed forward next, unless there's something cheeky in hand. Oh, right, there's a flame, flame, Phoenix Flame. Okay, Phoenix Flame for one. Gonna destroy the grains. Ashring for one, playing around the popper. I think Kevin has the popper as well. So do you pop this? Or do you pop? Okay, it looks like it, yeah. You you just have to you have to pop it here, right? This, I, I man, that was there. There was a lot of uh possibilities that turn for like the attack order of the dragons, and whether or not to wait one dragon to pop. Agility pops three card hand. Okay, we could we could have a. Depending on the uh, D-React situation, we could have a uh, quite the finish. This is the strength of dual wield is that if, if you do not have a D-React, the attack react could come on any of the attacks. And obviously you can't overblock. So the fact that there's an agility token plus this is coming in for a good chunk of damage. Oh boy. There's a... There's a lot of... Uh, stress when you don't have a d-react even more so than like obviously playing against dawn blade without a d-react is stressful but playing against dawn blade at a low life total without a d-react is not that stressful because you just throw your hand down and pray that there's no singing steel blade or twinning blade whereas here there's a lot of cards that kill you if you don't overblock and i already said that you can't overblock right okay decision time you block this for two, you're efficient, but you die to a three pump. You block this for three, you're not efficient, but you don't die.
And I think he has some two blocks and some three blocks. So this is a decision he needs to make. Checking the graveyard again. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess this is his battle-hearted life on the line. So that's fine. Oh, it could be overpower as well. <laughs> so even if you block... Oh, he's reading the overpower. He's like, uh-oh, that's plus four. And at three life, attacking for two, that is dangerous. Because if you block this for three, playing around those plus threes, and it's a plus four. Oh, boy. Yeah, blue overpower actually seals the game here. Very, very interesting. And by now, Kevin knows Dromai does not have a direct. Blocking for four, playing around the blue overpower. And he's like, fine. What are you going to do? You're going to overblock the hatchet again for, for for plus two? As Kevin, I think you're you're totally fine. You just say, sure, swing hat, swing the other hatchet. Oh, but okay. So, so going to give some information saying I do not have... Overpower. But if you don't give me five block, I'm going to hit you again. So I think you got to lay down at least five. Now, obviously, if Kevin has an attack react to push through, he won't have any pitch. So I think it's very safe to just block at plus one. In the swing, another card he's reading. Jean knows which cards are very, very deadly in this situation. Being at three is really the main issue. So you block at three, you die to a pump. You block above three, it's hard to give this board go again. Ooh, he has a Scar for Scar. Very interesting card in this situation. Looks like he's going to overblock and... Send the Scar for Scar. All right, there we go. Overblocking and Kevin's just going to arsenal that card. Unless he's Hollywooding. I I mean, technically he gets damage in if he plays it. But I think if that's in the swing, your out is take it on the chin and a blue. Being able to keep two cards or one card will be enough. Very interesting that Scarf for Scar is going to get big, big value here. Not only coming in for lethal, but also giving the board go again. And Dynamo's not going to cut it. I'm going to have to Dynamo plus a card. This is a lot of graveyard checking to be to be frank. Like I <laughs> There's only like four cards you need to keep track of, John. <laughs> Although I, this is the semifinals of a battle hard and this is very stressful.
So if Kevin has a popper, he might be able to win the game. All right. Something that uh, Jean is not doing is attacking with Azulai first to present two arcane. Obviously, that is very dangerous against poppers. He wants to know that the way is clear first. If Kevin has a popper, there's actually an interesting mind game here. You could drop to two. And then he's very incentivized to send the other dragons into the red zone. Maybe get a pop on one of them. But I don't think that's correct. We've burned them all still only at three. All right, so if there's a popper, it has to be right here. And it's, there's no popper. That's Warmongers. Asvali coming in for one plus two. And another card has to be given. And he doesn't have a go against source. Unless let's take it on the chin. He needs a blue, take it on the chin, and in the swing in Arsenal, and for Dromai to be greedy for Kevin to win this. And the body language tells you a lot. All right. One card for Dorinthia. Hatchet going at face. And I, with a fate for scene, look at the body language change. Confident in his blocking. Just skipping reactions. So, all right. No reactions. That skipping reactions could get Jean in a lot of trouble. Like, if that was Glint in Arsenal. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay. Rabbitus Rabble. And there's the handshake there. Plenty of damage to close that out. Plus all the arcane damage. All right. So, Jeremiah has taken down two Hatchet Dorinthias. We haven't really seen any major mistakes from the Dorinthias other than leaving a dragon or two for. A little bit too long, in my opinion. Uh, also, I think they need to carefully consider their win conditions. Uh, their win conditions being spill blood. Also, trying to time spill blood with balance of justice, I think, would be good. But overall, I think both players played pretty well. All right. Let's go to the finals. All right, guys. Welcome to the main event, also known as the finals of the Battle Hardened in Kiel. Okay, so we got Kasai versus Dromai. Dromai was, was fifth seed and Kasai was seventh seed. So Dromai going to have the choice to go first or second. I anticipate the Dromai will be going first. And, <clears throat> well, we're about to see what this game, what makes this game interesting. We have... Your eyes do not deceive you. That is Hatchet's Kasai on the right-hand side, piloted by Jascha. Okay, here we go. Finals time. So, standard equipment from Kasai, other than the weapons. Over on the other side, also looks very standard. And, <clears throat> like I said, drew my higher seed, probably going first. And... Well, let's uh, let's talk about the elephant in the room here. We have Hatchet's Kasai. So Kasai's ability stipulates that uh, if you draw a card, your swords cost one less. Well, a pistol is not a gun in this game, and a sword is not an axe in this game. And yeah, so that part of Kasai's hero text will be blank. However. The other part that says banish reds and yellows and you get a gold token if you hit with a weapon that will still be live. Of note, 
Kasai's specializations are also weapon independent. Blood on her hands says target weapon, target one hand weapon. And raise an army doesn't care if you've attacked with a hatchet or a sword or a great axe or whatever. They will still have go again as long as you've attacked with a weapon. So both Kasai specializations are online. And of note, Blood on Her Hands will allow Kasai to attack four times. So we're about to see basically whether or not it is better to attack three times more consistently, or is it better to attack two times and four times sometimes. Now, this is a... <laughs> Kind of ridiculous start. I guess we need to talk about this. So this is why you don't let Dromai go first, generally. Uh, so we had Tome into Rake. Uh, and there should be no risk taken to attack. So I would just Arsenal and pass. And Jean agrees, I believe. Pass priority. There we go. All right. So uh, not great. <laughs> As Kasai. Um, at least you should be able to clear most of this board and arsenal card. You're basically down on tempo, but mm, it's okay. All right, so I was about to talk about whether or not I thought... Oh, okay. Well, here, here's a good way to start. Cleave. Let's start removing some dragons. So, Kasai's... The difference between Hatchet Kasai and Hatchet Dorinthia is that Kasai will be attacking twice. And sometimes she'll be attacking for four, four times. And obviously the copper is much, 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 much more relevant in Kasai's build. Um, we didn't see either one of the Dorinthias have cash in. And yeah. Also, it's not the end of the world because... We can grains several times. So we can clear the board, grains, and arsenal, and all's good. And, okay, maybe, okay, actually, the side did not have a Gogan source, unfortunately. So, uh, still going to uh, be a little bit card inefficient, unfortunately. But that's okay. I anticipate there will be lots of game to be played. So this is a match where Kasai actually wants to go pretty slow. Um, she needs her copper generation. She needs to see spill blood. Eventually, she needs to know the position of those and basically use two spill bloods to control the board and use the third one to end the game. I anticipate is roughly what we're going to see happen. Another tome. Okay, well, this is kind of a high roll, seeing two tomes this early. Fixing all of your ash problems, and yeah. All right, so we're going to basically be looking out for differences between Kasai and Dorinthia, because I anticipate most of the gameplay is going to be roughly the same. We're going to see a little bit of dragon clearing, and then we're going to see some... Swings go to the face. Um, of note, hit and run should be uh, less useful in Kasai because you can't swing three times. However, still a good amount of damage. And Kasai could follow it up with something like nourishing, perhaps, depending on the texture. So I guess that's also another advantage is that Kasai could theoretically send the six power stuff across the board. Instead of popping, but likely just going to be popping. All right. Blaze headlong. Going to start the turn off four with go again. No blocks, reactions, no reactions, sync below. No sync from our Kasai player. Blaze headlong number two. So we're, we already saw a difference immediately off the bat. Kasai is running defensive cards. Dorinthia did not. 
mainly because Hatchet's Dorinthia has the ability to speed up or slow down, <clears throat> and both of the previous pilots thought to speed up, whereas Kasai's like, nah, we'll take it a little bit slower. And we see another difference here. Iron Song Determination. That's a card that I briefly talked about last match. Okay, Yenderai. Tanky Tanky Dragon. Iron Song Determination is going to be uh, quite important in the later part of the game. Something else we haven't talked about is how the hatchet scale in damage with Spillblood. And, well, not with Spillblood, with Blood in Her Hands. Take it on the chin, gonna generate an agility token. I just looked this up on my phone. I wanted to make sure I got the exact text of the weapon correct. Hatchet of Body says, whenever you attack with Hatchet of Body, if Hatchet of Mind was the last attack this turn, Hatchet of Body gains plus one until end of turn. So if you go for blood on her hands into spill blood, it will increase. Which is uh, pretty pretty cool. Of course, it's not like Oath of Steel, Lumina Ascension nuts because we're only attacking four times in total, not six, but uh, still very, very good. And could also be paired with things like um, Dust Path Pilgrimage, maybe. Currently, the only. So Twinning Blade stipulates target sword, so that can't be used. Uh, Lumina Ascension is obviously for Bolt in only, so. The ability to attack with weapons additional times is uh, not a very common ability given to uh, warrior cards. All right, so we just have a little bit of clearing and a lot of vigor generation. I also think the ratios in the Kasai deck obviously will be different. Uh, Dorinthia running very few yellows. Uh, basically the Blade Runner, the Hit and Run, maybe the Shift. Whereas Kasai, gotta be happy to run a wide variety of uh, yellow cards. But I still think uh, overall should be about probably 18-ish blues. That's kind of the lowest you want to be uh, in a deck that uh, wants uh, a blue every turn, but... It's not the end of the world if you don't have a blue every turn, especially with bigger tokens. All right, so the, as anticipated, the game starting off very slowly. And let's uh let's let's see how this goes. Kasai very happy, I think, to block out a lot of this vanilla damage because there's no need to rush. We don't need to, when we draw a hand with, uh, when we have a Vigor token and then we draw Blade Runner and Hit and Run, we don't ha we aren't forced to keep it because that's the optimal line. Um, Kasai is, because there's no pressure to attack three times, Kasai much, much, much more incentivized to block. And I think uh, blocking is what we're going to see a lot of. And we got E-Strike for seven, I presume. Could be for could be for go again and swing the Ashwing, but uh, obviously that's less damage and that puts the Ashwing in peril. And we got a block. Taking three. And I think we're we what we just saw is gonna be the bread and butter of this match. Block with dynamos and two cards and attack with two cards. And if we have extra resources, we could throw them into grains. And Kasai activation. Going to try to get this gold started. Now, in terms of gold payoffs for hatchets, I guess cash in is possible. But mainly it's just going to be used to filter the hand a little bit, and to uh, pay for raise an army. All 
All right. Attacking. So another another interesting thing is that uh, Kasai actually can use Glint a little bit better than Hatchet's Dory can because you can give your Hatchet an on-hit effect, incentivize them to block, and then Glint it. So that's another bonus there for Kasai. A very, very cute on hit token that the judge just put down. Okay, sink below going to deny the damage, deny the gold, and going to shift a card to the bottom. Still going to need to think about how to block out the second hatchet which will be coming in for five, I believe, because the Kasai ability is active the whole turn. All right, there's a five block right there. And no gold for Kasai today. That's okay. She'll try again in a couple of turns. I just noticed the deck size of Jessica. That looks more than 60. But those could be double sleeved. So something to take note of. All right, Chromai. Generating an action point here. Dynamos take it on the chin. Buddy buddy cards. And we haven't seen a popper yet, either pitched or blocked with. So, and it's been a few turns now. So, Jermai might be putting. Kasai on just Command and Conquer, perhaps. And an early burn them all, starting the, you know, the clock on that pretty early. Still quite a bit of uh, food for the uh, burn them all, so I think it should be fine. And now that there are two dragons to kill, I think we're just going to see a Unless there's an attack reaction in hand, I think we're likely to see this go into the Ashwing to generate more copper. And yep. And immediately, Jean should know. Oh, it's like, uh oh. <laughs> it's like, wait a second. I just gave Kasai four copper. Hmm. And then. Be like, okay, hold on. Blood on her hands plus spill blood equals 20-something damage. Hmm. So, it's really a tough position because if Dromai attacks, you know, on the ground with, you know, E-Strike, Rabble, Snatch, and such, Kasai is just going to block till the cows come home. If you start putting down dragons, obviously there's the risk of them being popped, but there's also a risk of them uh, turning into copper coins. And neither choice is really, really good. One thing that Drill My Player has done is protect their life total pretty well. Although we haven't seen the Kasai really going after the Drill My's face that much. So... We're kind, I think we're just, you know, as Kasai, we're like, okay, you drew three tomes in the first, like, six turns. Let's just weather this storm for, for now. You got an early turn zero rake. Okay, let's, you know, let's, let's just slow things down a bit here and play a longer game. And so traditionally, a longer game should favor Kasai. 
but in this matchup, it favors Dromai. However, Kasai has the ability to attack four times, three times in this game. So, going to be a very, very interesting situation. I'm also curious to see if Kasai's running Remembrance, because you do need, like, enough uh, copper to support the blood on her hands turns. So... Of note, the arsenal for Kasai is much more important than the arsenal for Dory. Um, combining, you know, two cards or just holding a card until you're ready to use it is going to be very important. Combining cards is actually super important in, in Kasai. Blade Flurry plus Spoils is like the classic example of that. All right. Uh, <clears throat> raise an army. Operating as a three block yellow, which is fine. We have rabble into rabble. We've seen uh, Jean in the last three games have a hundred percent hit rate on the rabble, which is nice. Also, we've seen him play most of them instead of blocking with them, which is also well done from him. Okay, looks like the side decided to take that. A Yenderai coming out at the likely end of the combat chain. Does it enter the red zone? It does. And the dynamo's immediately going to block damage. Burn them all triggers. One arcane. And... I think... An interesting note is that like dynamos actually give away, to some degree, whether or not you have a popper, which is kind of interesting. Hmm. I'm not sure if Jean is just very interested in the graveyard or he's like not completely experienced in this matchup because we at the beginning of game, the quarterfinals, we saw him read all the equipment of the Dorinthia player. So I'm not exactly sure. And, you know, Warrior is one of those uh, <clears throat> heroes where you definitely want to... Ooh, a Command and Conquer here. Ooh, good timing. The first one we've seen him play, and this is a really good Command and Conquer. Gonna be getting armor. In fact, getting an overblock. Wow. Very nice. I, ah, wow. I, I think Jaska really wanted that red Blade Runner to, uh, you know, do something. Probably that was meant to uh, go into Arsenal because there's no way that, or he could have double copies of it because there's, in terms of like the hierarchy, a red blade runner is one of the more valuable uh, weapons or cards in the deck. So we've been talking a lot about the hatchets, but let's talk about the differences between the hatchets and the uh, sword. So the main thing you're giving up is slice and dice and the hero ability half of your hero ability in return you gain extra damage output plus spill blood you also gain access to cleave we saw cleave utilized um and a lot of the cards that say sword only are not um oh look at this all right so yeah that that blade runner was intended to be arsenaled um but this is a this is pretty good here it's, this is what I was talking about, combinations of cards. Um, now, Jaska can go after face, and this is uh, very likely to hit. I think 
you need to brace her here. Yes, exactly. Because with the arm piece active and still one block on the chest, this needs to come in for uh, for five. Sorry, six. Three plus spill blood plus bracers. Coming in for six makes this much, much harder to block. And it's very important that these spill bloods both hits are landing. When both hits are landing, we got the 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 chance of blood on our hands closing out the game becomes much much higher. Without a D react, I don't think there's any way for this to block. And okay, so there there was there was the option of you know using all the equipment but John saying that's fine get your copper take two and we also have the gold token as well which is nice that was very important that that hit One interesting thing is that gold, if you set up your pitch stack correctly, basically equates to one extra resource. So that could actually enable, um, like if you have that plus a bigger token, that could enable you to go uh, spill blood into all the hatchets off of uh, blood in her hands. So I'm very, very, I'm very, very curious to see that turn. I, I believe that will be coming up. Probably not soon, to be honest, but um, soonish. <laughs> this this deck here is giving me a little bit of vibes of control, Reinhardt. Not the f like hardcore control one that's running club, but the very, very patient, double mandible claw style Reinhardt. Because the Kasai deck is playing very, very slowly, but when they see their power cards, they go. Which is very, very similar to how Reinhardt plays. It's there like, all right, we'll de-react this, we'll block this, we'll chill. And then we'll go. All right, two dragons deployed. And a third spoils of war. Time to get some money. All right. Azalei going to go down. And do we have the buff? We do. We have this Outland Skirmish into Hatchet. It's going to be perfect as long as that's a red. Yep. Going to generate three copper on that one. All right. Step one complete. 13 copper. At what cost, though? A lot of life. <laughs> okay. So now what is the question? And this actually makes me wonder, like, if copper is this important, should cards like High Striker be run in this deck? Because high striker with an attack reacts or high strike. I don't know if high does high striker say hero. Let's see. The next time an attack you control hits this turn, create six copper tokens. Hmm. Hmm. That sounds pretty good. High Striker, a single copy of High Striker pays for a blood on her hands. Huh. That's interesting. That's real interesting. That's really, really fascinating. Yep. 
High Striker Red. You heard it here first. All right. 14 point life lead plus tempo. No dragons on the board. Let's see what Jeremiah can do. Pitching a burn them all for second cycle. Okay, this is blocked out, but an Ashwing was created. Attacking with the Ashwing. And likely to follow this up with the E Strike. Gonna pop it and the turn prematurely. So we're going to furnace one of these cards and arsenal the E-Strike, I presume. So that's the first popper we've seen from Kasai. Okay, dust up. Pitching into the furnace. Okay. So that turn cycle, very good for Kasai. Basically went up about two or three cards of value. All right, <laughs> not the most eventful turn, but we'll take it. A little bit of chip, a little bit of setup. I wonder if Cleave is making Jean play differently. He had such a good start and then he got his board cleaved. And so maybe he's thinking like, oh, I really don't want to put out dragons. They just get cleaved. They get messed up by Spoils of War. I don't know. This feels like the fourth tome. Maybe I'm... <laughs> Maybe the games have started to blend together, but another tome? Huh, okay. Well, that should be the end of the tomes. The pitch deck for Dromai looking pretty good. I'm going to Panda Furnace for a larger dragon, or for what? Yep. Okay, so that's, uh, there's Kyloria. And Kyloria's twin. Can I see three Kylorias? Nope. Azvali, okay. Now this is still kind of annoying because Kyloria does actually steal relevant permanence. He has a gold and he has a, a butt ton of copper. Dynamos plus a card will deny one of these Kylorias, but the other one... Gonna be tricky. If Jaska has a popper, that's gonna be godlike here. And he does have a popper. Oh man. Really big tempo swing. And these Kylorias are dead ducks. Assuming Kasai has a go again source. 
If she doesn't have a go against Zorus, she should fish for it, I think. With the gold. All right, Kasai, your turn. Hit and run. Smack a dragon. Yep, goodbye. And then grains into smack a dragon, I presume. Yep. And a very, very, very efficient clear of the turn. And even getting two gr grains out of that, going to send a sink blow back into the deck. Not sure if that's... Uh, well, that's, uh, that's a card that uh, needs to be pitched around. Let's just put it that way. All right. And Jaska's deck still looking real, real healthy. I'm almost a hundred percent sure he he presented more than sixty. That deck looks like it's near full. Okay, rabble revealing snatch. Okay, that's good information to have. Fate foreseen blocking, indicating a little bit that Jaska has another D react, maybe for the snatch next turn that he wants to set up. Not, not, not necessarily, but you know, a light read. Okay. Now, what is the question? Is it going to be E strike from the arsenal, sinking a card? E strike's one of those cards that you kind of want to wait for a chromi. That way you can e-strike draw a card. Let's see what he wants to do. Snatch. This doesn't have go again. Still has snappies though. Dynamos plus a card. Okay, snaps are used. I think you is that a sand cover sand cover and a scar that's okay so that's actually an interesting thing scar for scar has been offline in this game where it was we saw it do good things in the other games i think this should be e strike sync the the scar for scar and then okay look, Keep the sand cover just in case, but you're running a little low on ash. That's kind of the thing. Hmm. Okay, East Track 7. And that's a two card block. And a lot of uh, cards utilized to go on the offensive on the ground. And Kasai with the D-React at the ready basically negated all of that. Took just a little bit of chip. Double Vigor, but no Agility. 
still going to activate the Kasai ability. So this might be an attack react in hand. This might be glint in hand. Or it could just be make some copper on hit, make some gold. Just for five. Not threatening too much. Pretty pretty solid incentive to block here for Jean. Deny the copper, deny the gold, deny the grains. Everything's face up to you. I think... I really, really like blocking here. Attacking in such a way also indicates Jessica is possibly on like a, not a fatigue plan, but um, maybe thinking about uh, switching gears into offense by playing card hands like this. No blocks. Okay, that is, that is a risk. That is a risk. You also gave the Kasai player an even amount of copper, which is uh, relevant. So 14 copper, 2 gold, and a Vigor token. And Dramai has an 11 point life lead and tempo but no board. So this, okay, this is this is not the easiest to evaluate here about who's winning. I, I think theoretically the Kasai should be winning, but you need a health buffer to pivot because unlike with the swords, you have to pay for your hatchet swings. So I'm curious to see how Kasai wants to... Uh, Execute a blood on her hand's turn. Okay. Mirror guy. No blocks. Taking the arcane. Taking the physical. And it looks like kind of, kind of a medium-ish turn. Trying to set up some ash into a nourishing. I don't know. I feel like... I don't know. Is this nourishing even active? It probably is, right? Burn them all on six. I mean, this is just too easy of a block, though. For Kasai. Like, block plus grains plus bracers. Easy. Shut down a six here. And that turn was just meh. That turn was average. I think Kasai not going to be too worried about turns like that. All right, three card Kasai got one dragon to clear. Also have an extra vigor token. Now, if any of those three cards are like important cards to pair, I think we're oh okay. So we have the cash in. That's that's a good use of the gold. Going to draw two. That's a difference between Kasai and Dory. we got four card Kasai now. It's interesting that, like, if you use cash in to draw cards, you have more cards to pay for your hatchets. So it doesn't really matter if... Okay, here we go. Blood on her hands here. For six. All modes to both weapons. Okay. So now the key is having four resources to pay for go again. And having preferably some effect like spill blood. 
Spill blood, super important because that will get eight value from blood card. And it will push damage because of dominate. Kasai ability going to be activated. Might as well, obviously. Fascinating stuff here. And here we go. Spill blood. Blood in our hands. Cash in. All, everything you've been working towards coming together. And here we go. First attack coming in for four. Dominate. With two floating, that means the card in hand is going to be used to pay for the final attack. Also going to be used to grains and bracers. So the turn right now is face up to Jean. We're going to come in for four. Then we're going to come in for five. Then we're going to come in for six. Then we're going to come in for seven. Oh, it also has plus one. Sorry. It's going to come in for five, six, seven, eight. So 5 plus 6 is 11, 18, and then 18 plus... So this is 26 damage, guys. Fate for Seen, got to block the first one. He missed his gold trigger. So Hatchet of Mind sees that Hatchet of Body attacked recently. So it's two plus two base plus one from the Hatchet attack, plus two more from Spill Blood, plus one from Blood on Her Hand. So this is for six. Okay, now he remembers his trigger. Okay, Mirror Guy going to try to prevent some bleeding. It's going to take three. Now, going to attack back here. This is for seven. Sorry, for six. My bad. It's five, six, six, seven. And depending on the pitch color in hand, uh, we should see bracers and grain activations. Very possible that's a red card. So that's why we haven't seen it. Because it doesn't really matter. The order. <clears throat> and the interesting thing is that. Jaska can do this again. As soon as he finds another blood in her hands. And this is, yeah, this is, uh, okay. It is a red, unfortunately. So this will be for seven. And with all this damage, it's very interesting he didn't attack the mirror guy at all. I think that's correct when you're coming in for this much damage. Okay. Blocking with sand cover plus CNC, trying to preserve life. Okay. Big turn from Jaska. Still one dragon on the board for our drummer player, though. So maybe this is an arsenal pass here. I think you just attack with the, the dragon, right? Just to get a little bit more value from the burn them all. Yep. Moving into the red zone for one arcane. And a pair of physical damage. Of course, dynamos chopping that in half. And Jermai's going to pass the turn. And look at this. The life lead... Significantly diminished. Burn them all has actually hit the graveyard now. 
burn them all dealt eight damage there another cash in okay drawing two do we have the signature kasai card in hand We do. And same thing. All modes to both weapons. Activate Kasai. And did you draw back to back cash in blood in our hands, spill blood's turns? No. Okay, so this is this is not going to be a spill blood, blood in her hands turn, but this is going to be a still a very, very, very big chunk of damage. And there are still several cards in hand. Obviously, some of them need to be utilized for pitch. But the, an interesting note is that because you're attacking so many times with the weapons, you have so many chances to grains if you don't draw the right cards. Okay, so this will be for four. With Gogan. Three, four, four, five is the damage output here. So it's 16 damage output. And now that Dremai's in blocking mode, the impact of having a lot of two blocks is starting to be felt. For example, that Scar for Scar right now feeling pretty bad. Playing small, basically because of Dynamos, you don't want to play small ball with Kasai or any Valiant Dynamos warrior in general. And if he holds the scar for scar and sends it, it's basically sending like a yellow scar across. Blade flurry, giving a good chunk of damage. And this will cause the Kasai ability to trigger because a weapon has hit, gold will be generated. Or it might have been on the previous hit. I might have missed that. All right. Final attack here. And the last card is going to go to Arsenal. With, with an attack pattern this wide plus attack reactions, ending the turn on the perfect amount of resources is just so easy with, the, with grains and bracers. Perfect efficiency here from Kasai. Gonna sand cover to block a little bit, but the Dromai has gotta be feeling mortal now. For the first time in the game, Kasai has taken the life lead. And there's only one dragon on board, one card in hand, and a life deficit. Good news is that there's not a bunch of copper sitting on the field. It's only two. Red scar for scar. It has go again now, at least. Yeah. There's that. <laughs> so can attack with the dragon as well. No blocks from our Kasai player. And 
Dynamo is going to shut down half the damage of this dragon. And we have a... F I presume the Arsenal card's not coming out. So we have a five-card Kasai. Now, five-card Kasai is, is... So you can't attack three times because you don't have the Dora Hero ability. So I'm going to be very curious to see how he utilizes five cards Olympia style. Never mind, not Olympia style. <laughs> Blood on her hands, gonna allow the weapon to attack an additional time and give it go again, I believe is the mode. Mm hmm. Spill blood, pitch a heart, gain a life. Very likely. Dromai drops really, really, really low this turn. We haven't seen that many attack reacts from Kasai yet. So I anticipate that's how this game will end. Okay. Go again dominate and the ability to attack twice so if kasai has go again in arsenal uh we'll see body mind body if kasai doesn't we'll see body body mind Either way, Jeremiah is going to need to block. Interestingly enough, no Kasai activation as well. Okay, Billing Mirage. Going to even up the life totals at 9 to 9. All right. What will be the second attack of the turn? It's going to be body again. So, depending on what pitch colors in hand, it's going to determine what the possibilities are with the equipment. Still has two gold available. We've only seen one or two cash ins so far. I think we've seen two. So, he could have broken a gold this turn to gain an extra resource, dig a little bit deeper in the deck. Potentially gain a resource, I should say. It's not guaranteed to gain a resource. I think this end game is starting to favor Kasai quite heavily. Without a board presence and having to block, it's going to be difficult for Dramai to uh, pivot. Yep. 
And as soon as you see two blocks defending, it's generally a bad sign. Okay, Bracer. Cleave. Oh, Cleave's so good here. Gonna attack Dromai, and it's gonna cleave into the mirror guy. Ooh. Is that for 10? Four plus three is seven, plus the bracer is eight, plus the spill blood. It's ten dominate, yep. Okay, so you can survive by giving a card plus some equipment. But goodbye to Mira Guy for sure. <laughs> Okay, Sigil going to be used to stay alive. I'm going to drop to three. And Cleave takes care of the other dragon. Okay. Comfortable life lead for a warrior player. Also, still haven't seen that many attack reacts from uh, Kasai. So there probably is an in the swing or a blade flurry or an iron song response to finish this. <clears throat> All Drum I could do is pass back and full tempo to the Kasai player. Even has some gold to smooth out this hand. I think we saw blue overpower as well. That could be the win condition here. Can I activate a gold? Push forward, blue. Wow. I love push forward. Push forward gives dominate and a buff to your weapon. But you need to have attacked with a weapon. And this is terrifying as Dromai. There's still a gold on board. And because I was like, yeah, now nah, I'm good. Let's go. So has a sigil in hand. That's a pseudo D react. Definitely something because I was going to need to keep. Keep in mind. Blade Runner, okay. And gonna attack with the other hatchet, I presume. Oh, an Iron Song Determination! Oh, man. Seven, dominate. And that is... Well, he still has a sigil. He's not dead. Sigil coming in real clutch right now. 
Still going to hit, so it's going to generate a Vigor. And Jastra is going to be able to put a card into Arsenal. So next turn, things are not going to get any better. Okay, he's going to quell instead. And then gain life to negate the whole thing effectively. All right, the game continues. Many, many, many cards will end the game in the next draw. Go again plus push forward, Iron Song Determination, Spill Blood, Blue Overpower, any of the attack reacts, Nourishing Emptiness. We haven't seen a glint in a while. This could be a perfect time for a glint. The card that started it all. <laughs> Rick the Embers. Blade Runner. Do we have a dominate effect? Push forward. Okay. Hit and run also adding damage is okay. Activating Kasai. I can't tell what that is. That's a cleave. Okay. And this is a ton of damage. I don't think Red Line Jeremiah is going to be able to take this. I think even if those are all three blocks, I think this is game. And that is game. C congratulations to Jascha for winning the Battle Hardened in Kiel. With a kick-ass Kasai deck, going to be frank. That's really, really, really impressive. Um, and really thinking outside the box. Uh, first time I saw Kasai, I was like, well, this is, a, this is a deck that stipulates you build your deck like this. Like, why would you blank half your hero text box? <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah. Very, very impressive stuff. We saw the... The beauty of running the hatchets allows for a massive damage push on a Blood on Her Hands turn. And the equivalent of Blood on Her Hands is Oath of Steel. Oath of Steel can generate similar amounts of value, but not quite. <laughs> so we saw the 
cash-ins coming in clutch. We saw the Spillbloods getting eight value. We saw the Spoils of War and Outland Skirmishes generating copper to fuel six copper blood on her hands turns. And yeah, those were the turning points. Um, yeah. Pretty cool to see what uh, what's cooking up across the pond. All right, let's uh, do a little summary and let's get out of here. Wow. <laughs> wow, what can I say? Hatchet's Kasai takes down the Battle Hardened. That was not on my bingo card. Uh, it's very, very nice to see innovative builds win, and it's very, very nice to see Kasai take down Dromai. That has been a very, very difficult matchup, but some outside-the-box thinking and some powerful specialization cards got Dromai the W. Uh, so I know this has been a pretty long video. I hope that you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, if you're going to Pro Tour, come up and say hi to me and the guys. We're very, very friendly. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that's going to wrap things up. It's been Josh Lau with the card, guys. Hope you have a good day. Take care.